paper peeps. Welcome to the paper fold. I am your host, Sarah. I first heard about Suzanne Loesch's gift and paper shop, Mockingbird Papery in Ithaca, New York, while I was working on the fall 2019 issue of Stationary Trends. At first, all I heard was that she had been the victim of a troll attack and had had to shut down her Instagram for a while before posting this beautiful open letter that I have shared on my site. Here's how it went down. Like many other small card and gift shops across the country, Suzanne stopped Sapling Press, a wonderful woman-owned letterpress range out of Pittsburgh. I did a search on her site. Right now, she has 16 Trump cards. Here's an example. Trump is a mentally deranged dotard. Happy New Year. A lot of the other cards in the range do have some profanity thrown in, but that's the general idea. At any rate, in the summer of 2019, Suzanne stocked the range on one row of a spinner rack in the rear of her store, away from little shopper's eyes. And one day, a shopper took a photo of the cards and shared it on a pro-Trump Facebook group with 30,000 plus members and the comment, have at her. What followed? Well, I'll let Suzanne take us through it right after this. Hey, paper peeps. So by now, many of my listeners are familiar with the force of stationary nature, better known as Girl with Knife. But if you aren't, time to change all that. From the first moment I spied her booth at her New York Now trade show debut in 2019, I was smitten with this cutting edge range that the world was calling out for. We all just didn't know it yet. Everything is nimbly collaged to life, slice by careful slice by the talented and exquisite Alicia Castaldi. This stylish collection of cards, journals, and notepads that have sprung to life under this fashionista's exacting knife is sharp, snarky, sleek, and occasionally very sweet, just like that BFF who would love to hear from you right now. For that reason, whenever I get my hands on Girl With Knife merchandise, I hoard it and use it most sparingly. Alicia recently launched Gift Wrap, and if you're already a fan of her range, you're familiar with her patterns and quality, but these super thick sheets elevate any gift from off the rack to atelier. Her recent releases of Midnight Botanical, Rare Creatures, and Chasing Dreams bring the total styles that slay up to 10. And if you're like me and that you fall in love with a range and want to reside in that world, you're in luck. Alicia recently unveiled Knife House, which was one of the few good things I can think of that came out of 2020. That was when Alicia shifted her operation from L.A. to this newly renovated concept home in Palm Springs. This completely private, walled, and gated estate features panoramic mountain views and countless looks surprises. Take a tour through its magnificent blush pink doors at www.knifehousepalmsprings.com or find it on Instagram at knifehousepalmsprings. Good luck getting your jaw off the floor as you take in this perfect California adult playground. These glamorous digs are available for photo shoots, film projects, special events, and short-term rentals. But just as importantly, all that exquisite Palm Springs flora and fauna have inspired Alicia's soon-to-be-released journal and notepads. She tells me that they're also expanding into home decor, which I, for one, absolutely can't wait to see. So now that you've glimpsed this wonderful world, you need this cutting edge lifestyle brand in your life. Find Girl With Knife in hundreds of shops across the US and half over half a dozen countries. Alicia and Girl With Knife have also been featured in New York Magazine, LA Business Journal, BuzzFeed, and of course, Stationary Trends. I run her work there countless times. Alicia was one of our 10 designers to watch in 2020 and proceeded to live up to that designation when last May, two out of her three nominated cards took CHOP honors at the Noted and Noted Virtual Greeting Card Competition. Then, for our winter 2021 issue of Stationary Trends, Alicia designed the 10 designers to watch frontispiece for us. It is something else if you haven't seen it yet. Also, 
as of 2021. Alicia is represented by none other than the Daniel Richard Showrooms in Atlanta and Dallas. Dan's eye is renowned in this biz, so his representing Girl with Knife is unsurprising, but it also means that this brand needs to be on your design radar stat. Check out this beguiling range at the recently refreshed girlwithknife.com. Right now, the theme is Season of Fierce, and I think we can all use one of those about now. I guarantee your stationery will slay. All right. I have Suzanne in the paper fold. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Sarah. It's really good to be here today. Oh, thank you so much for being here. So um, Suzanne has a store in Ithaca, New York, Mockingbird Papery. And for those who don't know, she had a very eventful summer of 2019. Uh, Suzanne, would you like to take it lightly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was a euphemism. <laughs> uh, Suzanne, would you like to take us through events um, as you as you recall them? Sure, sure, sure. Um, a little bit more background on the store, you know, or, or the town in, in itself, because a very, very liberal um, community, really um, grassroots. Everybody's, you know, um, got a voice there. And um, which which makes it a really great place to live and um, kind of be a part of things. Um, anyway, I uh, have this great stationery store where we have lots of cards that, um, ha you know, uh, some are political, some are, um, you know, uh, letterpress, some are more artful with local artists and um we have this one one card line um, called Sapling Press, and uh, it's a letterpress company, and they have beautiful, beautiful cards and um, fantastic political satire cards. <laughs> and I mean, Sapling is brilliant aside from the political. I mean, like she is so brilliant at shows. I will stop in her booth and just stand there laughing Laugh. like a fool for for 20 minutes, just picking everything up and laughing. I mean, her political cards are amazing. Her regular stuff is amazing. Um, Lisa just has like a real grasp on like sarcastic, um, yes. enlightened Absolutely. Um, humor. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, yeah. So, and Suzanne, your store is, I mean, my guess is it, I'd be shocked if it was more than 1500 square feet of selling space. How big is, how big is your it's shop a, itself? Yeah, it's, it's about 2,500 actually. We, oh, it's big. It's on the big well, side. We, yeah. We used to be really small. Um, uh -huh. And then the first year I took over, I knocked out the, the wall next to me and took over the space next door. So okay. uh, we, we enlarged really, you know, doubled okay. our size. Oh, wow. I, I mean, it's my bad. I mean, like, I always assume that our readership of stationary trends are these shop, you know, these a thousand square foot shops where there's just so much great uh, merchandise packed into them. Pencils, cards. It is. Cards, it, it really, but you're it, just a slightly larger footprint. Just a little bit larger. Just a little <laughs> bit larger. <laughs> Although so, when I look at it, it doesn't seem like it's 2,500 square feet. So that's anyway. Yeah, it's counting a lot of space that the, you don't even see in the store. Right, right. So I'm sorry to digress. Please continue. That's so you okay. carry Sapling Press. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're having an interview. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, 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 the part or most of the line that I carry are, of course, the political satire cards. Um, and uh, particularly this, um, these last four years have been very, very contentious. As, you know, we, we all know. And um, for both both parties and even other parties, but um, so I, I had a um, you know kind of um, not on Front Street, so to speak. It was kind of around the corner, you know, because mm -hmm. some of the the language is very colorful, if you would <laughs> would like to call it that. Right. Right. Um, and uh, so I don't have it in front of the kids, you know, view. Right. right you know, right. like right a, a little street. child is going to see yeah. that Trump is a bad word. Yes. Right. right. Exactly. 
Um, yeah, even though he says those actual words. Um, yeah. So, and he probably is. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, one day, apparently, I didn't even know it, but um, suddenly um, I get a call from my uh one of my my mockingbirds, as I call them, part of my team, and uh, I, I get a call, and she's hysterical. Uh, somebody's called the store, and and um, she she's called me names, and I didn't know what to do, and I gave her your phone number, and she <laughs> gave my, yeah, that that was really great. They gave out my home phone number, and um, I saved the message. I would love to play it for you. Here is that actual message. Hi, my name is Catherine. Um, I am very active on Facebook and just received a post today um, indicating that it's your store that has a display of signs that are extremely offensive. Um, I wonder if you understand what you're doing. This is this is truly, truly beyond the pale. Um, I don't care where you live. I don't care what your politics are. This is grotesque. Um, and I would even suggest that if anybody had ever put anything up, signs available for sale, that said Obama is a douchebag and so on and so forth, it would, um, your store would probably be burned down. Um, I find this horribly, horribly offensive and completely unnecessary. And you should be ashamed of yourself. This is an insult to every person that's walking around and trying to be decent. You're an abomination. She called to. me an abomination. She called me all kinds of words. Like it was incredible. Uh, so anyway, the the <laughs> cards basically say things like, um, "Trump is a feckless twat." Happy birthday! <laughs> right. Or, um, right. You know. My favorite one from that series is the one where she says, if Trump can become president, surely you can do this. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. Mine are, <laughs> my favorites are a little more on the colorful side. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously yeah, yeah. this, this in it, so an individual went in your store and, yeah. and photographed. And they, went, they photographed um, the cards and then blasted it, put it out on Facebook. So I start getting these calls. And I start getting called um, uh, a pedophile and an abomination. And um, we're going to burn your store down. We're going to, um, we're going to, you know, you should, you should be um, dragged through a town square, um, you know, behind a, a, a car. We'll stab you. And I mean, it was just terrible. It was wow, like horrible, horrible, I mean, horrible, horrible things. A little slight overreaction. <laughs> Yeah, my my kids were freaking out. They're like, you, you better close the store and and you better, you know, I had a lot of feedback from a lot of people and we really at, in the beginning didn't really know what to do. Um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my husband is very uh, a very logical man and so we spent a lot of time talking about it. We closed immediately for mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. like the 24 hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um kind of decided whether or not we were going to go forward and um, we decided we would. Oh, so you were considering even just closing the store forever? Well, no, no, no. Just kind of like to talk about things and pull the card. You know, we were talking about whether how we were going to proceed with or without the cards. Sure. So sure. absolutely. Yeah, okay. Well, I would never close my store over a first amendment issue um, at all. Right. And that's what it was, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, really felt um, after talking with my husband and my family and um, we we decided to stay open. So the next day we reopened the store. I, we had called the police. Um, everybody, you know, now everybody knew everybody. I noticed immediately that that there were three or four people hanging out with cameras. And I was like, whoa, what's really going on here? 
And uh, so um, I said, who are you? And, you know, uh, the first person said, well, I'm with the, you know, so-and-so paper. And um, when I'd like to do an interview, I said, please come in. And uh, so, um, you know, uh, what's interesting is that the, the um, newspapers and the uh, TV reporters um, really had, each one had their opinion. And you could tell it through this. You could hear it through the story that they told. Right, right, right. So um, uh, it, that, that kind of bothered me. but um, It's very bothersome. I mean, I, I went to journalism school and I mean, we spent a long time talking about objectivity and really, you know, you... You, you know, you can abandon most of your biases as you do your job, but it, you know, it's obviously impossible to, you know, let go of all your biases. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think as I've like thought about that more and worked in the field and gotten older and watched the news, I mean, really, it is as much about the questions you're asking as it is the questions you aren't asking as to how you are framing the questions. Like that determines a lot of how a piece um, positions Developed. itself. Developed, absolutely, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yes. Totally agreed. Yeah. Well, I um, sat there, you know, my husband and I sat there um, I was trembling, shaking and, you know, uh, oh, my God, you know, what What are we going to do? What are we going to say? And and, you know, my husband, like I said, is just such a logical, quiet, thoughtful person and was able to really help me articulate what was what we were going to do. And what right, we right. made a decision to do was to answer every single call and every email and every letter that came in and we had decided that we would make, you know, we were even coming up with ideas afterwards, like, Oh, let's make an art project out of the letters. We'll do a window display. And, and actually it did inspire me to do a huge first amendment window after mm. the whole thing. That was the very first thing I did. I mean, I think it, what a thoughtful measured response. And that's, not, and when you were talking about your husband, it was reminding me of mine because he is like a very methodical sort of, he can remove himself emotionally from a situation and work through it. Whereas that is How not is that one possible? of my skills. <laughs> and so like possible? you took, <laughs> you took the most thoughtful approach possible. And, um, and it's really a rarity. I mean, most people, you know, your knee jerk response is very, is to go on the defensive and, you know, and, and get into it. So um, rather than doing that, you took a very conciliatory approach. So, um, and your husband took time off work to reach out to all these people. No. Yeah. Two weeks. He sat in the office for two weeks while um, I was, you know, cause we're, you know, an all um, female, uh, you know, basically I call it a one woman show, but, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're a, um, all women run business. And, um, so I was scared. Uh, I was really terrified to be in my store. I was worried, you know, someone was going to come in and, you know, do something. And so he took time off of work. Um, mm -hmm. he's a, a corporate attorney, Okay. And, um, so that's, uh, that's like taking off 90 hours. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, even right. more than right. that, excuse me, Every Wait, minute more like, like 100, <laughs> 150 hours. I'm sorry. Um, right. every minute yeah. is equivalent to three minutes. Yes, <laughs> it is. And, um, so anyway, he would sit, I could hear him and he had so much compassion for the people, um, anybody who called it, it it didn't matter if they aligned with what we thought um was was right or wrong mm -hmm. um he you know my one of the very first people i actually talked to um when i got up enough nerve to answer the phone because it rang incessantly for for a couple of weeks and um i was a just a wonderful gentleman who was a uh, um, a, a veteran and, uh, from Iraq and, and, um, I wanted, you know, I, I felt exactly what he was feeling. I, I, I could understand it. I could, I get it. I, I, we all did. And, um, you know, it hurts people, um, in certain ways, people that, 
um, you know, for me, it, it, it was a no brainer. I just felt like it, it was important to be, um, as neutral as I possibly could and be as respectful as I possibly possibly could. That's amazing. And hats off to you because it's keeping a cool head is not, is not easy at all. So well, you should see me at home. Cause I'm not that way <laughs> in public. <laughs> I'm Please. sure we're all like beating our chat. I mean, we're just, one more day. One more day. Okay. Sorry. One more day. We're almost there. We're almost so, there. <laughs> so you did. And you and you actually like really connected with some of these individuals and made some friends. Actually, I yes. I made an incredible friend. She's really, really shy. Her name's Bonnie. Um, she uh, wrote a letter um, to me, an email, and it, it was... Um, really uh a very um thoughtful and um it had a lot of it i it just touched me and i i responded to her and she said this is she goes i have set this sent this letter out to so many people and you you are the first person who has ever responded and i thought to myself that is really sad you know how where how far have we gone down that we can't uh laugh about you know um some of the things that are happening um in politically and and since when could we not have a conversation about um our differences and and so Bonnie and I continued to write back and forth to each other for several months and mm -hmm. um we we um you know kind of knew each other's families a little bit through writing. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And that was really um, very revealing, both um, I think to her and to me. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, imagine how much more you stick to your guns when you feel like every time you reach out to someone for a conversation, you're essentially ignored. Um, it's, you know, it's maddening and, you know, she was obviously just trying to have a conversation with yep. people and not having that happen. So do you, are you still, in, are you still in touch with her or are you still in touch with anyone else? I'm not in touch with her right now. I'm actually, you've inspired me to, just thinking about her today. I'm going to write, write to her and tell her about this podcast. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. She should listen. Yes. Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> So I also wanted to ask you how you fared uh, during the shutdown and throughout this global pandemic. We were closed for three months solid. So mm -hmm. um, I used that time uh, to um, build up my online store for the first time. Uh, okay. And that's thriving. Great. As Go there. I, I missed, I'm going to go there. Okay. Go buy something. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. www.mockingbirdpapery.com. <laughs> um, you know, it's a great, uh, it, it is so beautiful. It's so much more than, um, I, I thought it could ever be. Um, when I first opened the store, I started a website and I was unable to, um, sync the inventory properly. And so I, I'd get like these orders of like 20 calendars and, uh, I'd have three in stock. So, um, now things are much better and, and the, the site is beautiful and I'm able to fill lots of orders. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, I mean, you're not the first retailer I've heard of who was not on, uh, they had a site, but they were not doing e-commerce and they spent quarantine moving everything on, on site. And they're so happy they did that. They're not happy they went into quarantine, but they're happy that they sort of got the push to, to do it because it was something they'd been intending to do for a really long time. Yeah, that, that was, um, you know, I, when we first closed, I was, freaking out, you know, what are we going to do? Is this going to, you know, is this going to be it? You know, it's eight years now and, um, is, is, you know, we were scared and, right. um, it really did force, um, a lot of things to happen. 
and we were lucky um, to have been able to take advantage of some of um, the the loans that were out there and the grants for uh, small businesses. So um, that allowed me to, um, you know, with my online store, it's just incredible. Sure, yeah. that's awesome. I'm so happy. And um, and when were you able to actually physically reopen? Um, we re so we closed March 15th, I think was our last day or March, either March 7th or March 15th. And then we were able to reopen th almost three months later. And it was terrifying the first two weeks, like one or two people would walk in, in the day. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I was like, huh, this is it. This is really it. Or it's not going to, you know, everything is going to be online now. And, right. um, then slowly, day by day, we started getting more and more people in and, you know, people were um, fantastic. They just wanted to support the store so much. Um, they just were so grateful. And, um, you know, there's a, a lot of stuff that we have to go through now. You know, they, the hand sanitizer, the, you know, um, the sanitation station, as we call it. And, uh, you know, it's... Um, it's it, it's a little bit uh, trying on people's nerves because, you know, people who are out shopping the commons where my store is, which is like in a pedestrian mall outside, sure. you know, if you're going from store to store, it's, uh, you know, you're putting on hand sanitizer like 10 times, you know, and people are like, oh, my God. And once they get into my store, they're like, oh. It smells so good in here. Oh God, you know or they're relieved, and and the environment is is really pretty. And, right, um, you're like a nice little haven, nice yes, little first exactly. lemon haven. <laughs> <laughs> first, yes. Welcome. <laughs> Say whatever you want, but you will. Oh, or, yeah, they, and they do. They they come in. Are you the store? Are you <laughs> the one? Well, and plus, I always post things out out. Uh, in front of the store on my little sandwich board. So I'm, you know, right now Black Lives Matter and, and things are really important there. Uh, right. So, you know, I'm, I'm putting up signs and, um, you know, uh, so we, we get a lot of support from the community. That's, that's awesome. I'm and I mean, now it's great that you're, a two, I'm sorry, if you said 2,000 or 2,500 square foot selling space, because that's, I mean, in this day and age, you know, I mean, I know of some smaller stores that can't even reopen because they just cannot social distance. Um, how many can you have in your shop? Well, um, that's a good question. Um, since we've um, done, sorry, um, since we've done some... The, some of the remodeling, I'm not exactly sure what the numbers exactly are, but that's one of my biggest fears is having to um, count people coming in during the holidays because that's when, you know, my store is very seasonal. It, you know, it's a wonderful place during the year, but it really um, thrives in, in the holiday months. So, you know, I, I, when I went out recently and saw people, counting people and only allowing a certain amount of people in the store. I thought, Oh, and it's tied in my store. You know, we have arrows on the, on the floor, but nobody pays attention to it. Um, <laughs> nobody, I, it's impossible. Plus <laughs> Sophie, my, my, uh, mockingbird who, uh, uh, put the tape down on the floor, um, <laughs> was a little insane the day she did it. And it, uh, it takes you on a, a, a freaking train ride through the <laughs> store it's hilarious um, that's awesome yeah <laughs> so, no, one can follow, no one can follow the path no no follow the yellow brick road <laughs> oh, I, I mean seriously i don't even know it's funny i've gone through the store myself and well i think we're going to be able to pull it off because i think a lot of people are um i'm also delivering so um people can shop online and i i can literally bring their bag to them on the way home. Those right. are my local people um, who shop. Um, so that's great. Know. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Look, I mean, it's holiday season. People just want to go in and shop if they have to wait. I mean, I'm more willing to wait in 70 degree weather than I am in 30 degree weather. Right. So, exactly. You know, that I'm, can I'm be worried. really 
big issue. It, I mean, I, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe you can you give out little cups of hot cocoa to people who wait or something That's like that. That's a great idea. Hot cider and, and donuts. Right. Like yeah. give them something uh, to eat. Right. Or drink. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to probably have to mark the, um, the patio or the sidewalk outside because in the, in the winter, I mean, I've had a hundred people in that store and right. it is, I mean, when I say 2,500 square feet, I mean, that's really, that's with fixtures, with product. That's yes, with, it's not an you. open, it's not an open no, space. No, it's not an open space. It's, it's um, two rooms that are lined with, with um, products and, and, and different you know, bookshelves and, and, and fixtures. Exactly. So I don't know, you know, we'll see. And, and I've never had to keep track of, of, um, you know, how many people were in the store before. And it's interesting. Even now where we're slowly getting back to the numbers that we were doing before, mm -hmm. um, it still doesn't feel like we have too many people in the store. So right, that's right. it. And it just feels, it just feels different, I think. Uh, totally. Which leads me to my next question. I know you mentioned it when we were chatting beforehand. Uh, how are people being good about, are, being, are people being compliant about masks? And, um, and when you have to say something, is it, is it an easy interaction? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you two, two different times. Um, so 99% of the time they are wonderful people. Um, I've had, um, the one person who, uh, came in with, um, you know, I, she was allergic to hand sanitizer and she, um, couldn't wear the mask and, you know, it was one thing after another. And I said, mm, um, well, I have a mask here. Unfortunately, it is the law you have to, you know, um, and I don't, you know, and, and she said, uh, I said, uh, I made a little deal with her. I said, if you don't touch anything, I'll shop for you and I'll go through the store and you just point out things and I'll, and I'll pull them down for you. And, um, luckily nobody was in the store at the time because so nice. yeah. And then, um, just the other day, um, the, I, <laughs> okay. Uh, how can I tell that <laughs> somebody, somebody, um, who, uh, I, somebody who, Hmm, how can I say this? Uh, anyway, they, they came up to me, uh, in the store before I was open and, um, she didn't have uh, a mask on at all. She was outside doing her thing. And I, she was a, an a, a elderly woman of maybe 75. And I, she came, she came into the store and I, I said, aren't you afraid of not having a mask on here? Do you want, you know, I have like a little area. In fact, I have thieves that come in and steal my mask because they love my masks. They're black <laughs> and, and shiny and pretty. So um, they, they're not like thieves, but they're, you know, they're, they're shoppers. And I leave them there for people who don't have a mask, but even the people who do have a mask, I see we'll them try to, yeah, yeah. My so, daughter did that to me and to us in a store. And I, I was like, Veronica, you can't just take them. At, that's not when it was like kind of, it was like a fancy linen store and it was oh, like a silk oh. mask. And I was like, I can't believe you just <laughs> grabbed that. I'm, I'm sorry. We digress. Oh, yes. Okay. And then so she said, oh no, I, I, I've never worn a mask that you know, never, I'll never wear a mask. That's, you know ever again you know oh, la, 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 you know and, and I just like was like are you aren't you are you terrified you know even our you know <laughs> our fearless leader you know got it aren't you were you know and and uh she just yeah I, I didn't want to push it because I could tell this might be the one where it 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 it, it devolved Right. And do you really want it to be with a 75 year old? Right. Yeah. <laughs> then that's you, elder. Then you'd be doing a different story, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be totally different. <laughs> so 
uh, coming full circle, I mean, I, I wrote about this, as I mentioned, in the fall uh, 2019 issue of Stationary Trends. It was a great, it was a fun art. I mean, I, I have to say, I enjoyed writing the article. Rarely in the gift and in the gift and stationary do I get to write an article with that's that dramatic. Right. Um, and so when, but when we were chatting, you know, your story did not stop there with this incident. And um, can you tell me, us, how you discovered who put the image on Facebook on the first place? The image was shared with a group, a pro-Trump group that had about 30,000 people. So it was one individual who opened this can of worms. And you, for a long time, you probably didn't even, it didn't even occur to you to wonder who it is. But then you found out who it was. Yeah, we had an anonymous caller, you know, like the police were coming to the store every day and, and checking in and being really, you know, the mayor came down and, and um, bought like a, all his cards for the year. And, you know, people were checking on me and um, uh, that that felt really good. Um, anyway, but uh, we get a call from um, this anonymous person who uh, says, I, I'm really, I, I don't want to call the police, but I know who the person was who, who put you guys out on front street with that, um, with the Trump cards. And I was like, what, oh, um, what are you? Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> we found out his name. We found out where he worked. We found out everything. And I decided not to press charges. I just, oh. Yeah. What what was your thinking behind that? Uh, retaliation. Retaliation. Well, and I. Oh well. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes that makes perfect sense. I mean, I I guess for me, when you told me that, I thought, well, maybe she just wanted to let it die. Like, and just, I did. Yeah, but I like both. You, lived, <laughs> you can have more than one reason for doing something. Yeah. No, actually, it was for many reasons. You know, like one. Uh, he, he really had a, um, a strong feeling, you know, because he, he really, he, um, you know, what he was feeling motivated him to the point of, um, almost shutting my business down. Um, if somebody could do that, somebody, um, you know, who perhaps might be, um, less mentally astute, uh, might, uh, come in and, you know, you know, throw a brick through or, you know, you know, we hear about really terrible things all, every day, all day long. And, um, so, you know, I was really scared on one hand. Um, but yeah, no, um, also, I mean, look. yeah. Yeah. And I and just respect, let it die. Yeah. And, and, and die. that was the other thing I was worried because it was, it was getting bigger and bigger every day. The, the first were the local papers, the local uh, people, and then it was CBS and NBC and, and the, those affiliates. And, and I, I, at that point, I was like, that, that's when I put the kibosh on. It was like, that's it. That's, uh, it's over. Right. And um, right. I, I mean, felt like, yeah. you know, yeah, it made it any bigger. It would just be stupid. Cause I could have right. made it bigger and I could have taken it all the way, all the way, all the way to the top. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't want to do it. Trust me, I, I, in the old days, the old Suzanne would have done it. But I'm right, I'm right. Too old now. When you're young and full of piss and vinegar, yeah. like you're going to take right. this one. I'm going to do it. I'm doing right. it. I know. I know. But you have, you know, you, yeah, I, I understand. I, you know, I feel like the person who did it, you know, we're all the, we're all the leading people. We're all the stars of our own movie. And they thought that they were in the right and thought they were doing the right thing. And I'm sure he thought yeah. he was some kind of hero. And, um, you know, I, God, I think it's who's... kind of wise not to go toe to toe with that. Like really you do not need that. <laughs> I mean, so some of those emails and some, I saved everything. Some of the, the texts that came in were so violent. I mean, so just disgusting. I mean, things that you couldn't even imagine saying, I mean, like where, where would you even come up with that? 
I mean, right. like, why, you know, and does that have anything to do with the, with, with uh, our politics today? I mean, right. you know. And why are you directing it at some lady who's carrying a line of greeting cards? And it's her- a birthday card, you idiot. <laughs> like, really? You're like ready to kill someone over a birthday card. I know it's, it's insane. And, yeah. um, you know, but you, oh, oh. let me tell uh, you one more quick thing. Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Tell uh, me. Tell uh, me. Well, so, um, you know, after the immediate, you know, like shock of it all, I started among the calls I would get were people who were also, um, W- wonderful people who are like, I'm from, um, you know, so and so Colorado. I want a hundred of those cards. Um, <laughs> send me all the cards you have, and you know, and I did that. I, I, I did, and um, you know, that was really funny too. That was that was a really funny part. And also, we had like, um, we had uh, Republicans um, and people of all political backgrounds coming in pushing the door open and saying, we support you. We love you. The Republicans were like, we're sick of this. This is stupid, you know, and, and we love you. We love your store and we'll keep coming in. And, you know, it it was, it was, that was really wonderful when, when, when the other side, you know, came in. And it's like, yeah, they're sticking it. Look, they live in there too. You know, they live in Ithaca too. It's part of their client, you know, yeah. Community. I, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like um, with the passage of time and obviously, you know, tomorrow is the election. So everybody's, you know, you and I are both like, I mean, so strung out. And uh, by, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious, has your, I mean, do you feel differently about this whole experience having had, you know, over a year to process it than you did like, you know, when you just came out of it? I have uh, thought about, yeah, every day I think about it Um, and, and weekly have breakdowns and cry and, and uh, you know, my, again, I have to, to give props to my husband because, you know, he's the one who's always there and being the rational one and, and getting me through the next day because, it's like I'm I'm forced to uh, I, I'm always saying, um, where's the accountability? Where is the accountability? Why is this not happening? And and why is the biggest word I've said for the last year, for the last four years. And um, <laughs> yes, I understand. Why? Yeah, and I, why, 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 what's happening? My husband laughs all the time. He, he says, that's like the number one thing I say, what's happening? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, oh my but, God. And you just reminded me, wait, wasn't that like the keyword of the seventies sitcom? Wait, wasn't, what was the show? It was, that was a show called what's, what's that's happening. The, yeah. What's ha- happening. What's happening? What's happening? But it meant it? something totally What's different happening? in the seventy. It meant something totally different in the seventies. Yes, 70s. it did. Like, yes, it was it like, did. hey, what's up? Let's hang out. Right. Like, right. It was now not. It's like a, it was not like we're in a dystopia. Of what's happening? Right. God. Um, yes. So you know, um, with this year, I guess um, this year has been uh, the most emotional. Um, emotionally charged, um, a lot of changes. I mean, big changes, um, with business and, and people and family and, 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 you know, uh, there, there's just been so many things. It would be hard to say, um, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> oh my God. Have I had no, a lot no, of fun? Yes. Like- Now that you're processing, now that you've had some time to process it, you know, where are you at? I I would not do anything different. I would, um, I would, I would, if there was one thing different, I would buy 10,000 more of those cards. (laughs) Cause you would have sold every last one of them. I'm telling you it was the best July I ever had. Wow. So, you know, it's not without its silver. I mean, as, as horrible and terrifying, I mean, people are t- saying they're going to murder you and drag you yes. out of the store as horrible and terrifying. At least there was one, 
you know, good thing. Yeah, that was... one that was a silver lining. I mean, you know, there there were many more. Bonnie was uh was just that was unreal. Uh that that whole thing, that relationship that came out of that. And um, you know And I uh, and I can imagine the local support your mayor, yes. you know, yes. people who are across the aisle from you saying, Hey this is crazy. We're thinking of you like that right. means a lot. A lot. Um, so, and I don't think, I mean, despite, you know, there is so much uncertainty now and, um, but however it goes, I don't think you're going to be the last retailer who encounters this. I know that there, there was one more I heard of. It was, it was a different, it was a different situation. It was Brooklyn and it was, I know, and I don't have all the info. It was told to me secondhand. Um, and so I might not have all the incidentals, right. But my understanding mm. was that it was a retailer with a store in Brooklyn and during the black lives matter, um, protests, her store kept getting vandalized and she put some of the video of her store getting vandalized on Instagram and oh, people really no. got upset. Um, and, you know, and she was a part of my French living at a bit of a shit show for, you know, several weeks. Um, I believe she's come out of it. I sort of wanted the dust to settle a little bit before reaching out to her. And since I heard about her second hand from another vendor, I, I'm always a little reluctant to be the person who called. I mean, it, I do have a journalism right. background. I hate to be that person who's like, hi, Sarah Schwartz from Stationary Trends, you know, please tell right. me all about how you're being constantly harassed. Do you have a comment? So I'm sort of, I would like to do something on her. But, you know, my point is, is that I think it's very easy for, you know, a gift store, a stationary shop to sort of, you know, find themselves in one of these situations. Um, and so what advice would you give to any retailer who finds themselves going through something similar? Uh, wow. Um, okay. Have a lot of talks with your, your staff and um, reassure them first and foremost, their safety comes first. And, um, and then, um, you know, don't think that it's the end of the world. It feels like it, but it's not, it, it just, it isn't. And you can parlay it into, uh, some, you know, like the first amendment window, like, um, a pen pal situation. Uh, it could, it, it just, if at all possible, just turn it around. And um, as they always say, the best revenge is success. And um, and that's how I felt about it um, in the end. And so I would just say, you know, just just stick with it and and, um, you know, call me for call me and, and, and I'll tell you how it went. <laughs> <laughs> right you and, and you know what sarah that. don't be afraid yeah don't be afraid to reach out to that woman i you know that you were talking about in brooklyn i know it, uh -huh. people are so in need of an outlet right now uh -huh. to talk uh -huh. about what's happening in, in the world today you know i i just you know i wouldn't let anything hold you back um you know, because. Right, right. I know, I know. I mean, like, people just want a sympathetic ear. I mean, the value yeah, totally. of listening these days listening. Just goes like it's so valued. And um, yeah, I mean, look, I will. Um, I actually am going to be talking to my friend who's told me about her. So maybe I'll reach, I'll ask for an update and, and see about reaching out. Because, you know, uh, you know, um, as I said in the article, uh, you know, most retailers, their store is their baby. And when it's coming under attack, it's like your family is being attacked. I mean, it is your livelihood, but it's also, you know, very much a part of yourself. And so it's terrifying. And absolutely, uh, I would be nowhere without that store that that right. is pretty much a, that's one of the most defining moments of my life. And when I became a store owner. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And paper people are so you know, we're just you know, we're our own breed and you yes. know, these stores are like, 
you know, you know, to your customer, your mockingbirds, to your customers, like they expect it and their lives would be really diminished if you weren't, um, you know, open. I hear that um, every day. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for doing what you do. And thank you so much for coming to the paper fold. I, I am, this is, this has been a really um, interesting episode to record. And, um, and I, I, I think it, I think it is, it has a lot of value. Thank you, Sarah. And you are just uh, a fabulous interviewer and it's been a wonderful experience for me as well. Oh, thank you. Hey, paper peeps. So Kitty Meow Boutique has been a fabulous client of mine for a while now. So hopefully many of my listeners are familiar with not just the dazzling wares from this Chicagoland house of paper, but also its amazing founder, a force of nature better known as Catherine Hildner. This mom of two with another scheduled to arrive soon has created a most intoxicating stationary range. I define the Kitty Meow aesthetic as polished and very smart. Think of the sharpest outfit you own that you feel like a million bucks in, but in stationary form. Everything from typography to envelope choice comes together to pack a most enticing punch. But this range is not just about the surface. It's about honoring those connections with those we care about most. And you'll see once you visit kittymeowboutique.com that the wares are divided into witty and sweet because as Catherine puts it, sometimes you feel a little saucy and sometimes you don't. But Kitty Meow Boutique is so much more than just another pretty face in the marketplace. The empowering messaging found on her cards, invitations, journals, coasters, art prints, and enamel pins elevates the range into something that makes you feel not just seen, but good about yourself too. Everything is essentially a little lift visually and emotionally for not just those you love, but you as well. Not only is Kitty Meow available for your personal shopping needs, it's also available wholesale to all those shops looking for something new with which to excite their customers. She's on FAIR. Visit kittymeowboutique.fair.com and get your shop started. Finally, I think what I love about Catherine most is that she is really all about living your best life, as you'll see for yourself beneath the education tab on her site. She offers KMB Signature Collective, a mastermind for women in the product-based business world who have a love for paper and giftable items, who have an idea and a plan, but need guidance and support to be successful in their efforts. I so agree with Catherine. It's so important to be surrounded by like-minded women and leaders who are willing to put in the work to lift each other up. For that reason, it's not a course. It's a friggin' transformation, people. And Catherine has also started my second favorite podcast, Dreams to Plants, with another brilliant force of nature, my girlfriend Renee, to elevate your daydreams to actual tangible plants. Oh, and if you're on Clubhouse, follow Kitty Meow so you can tune in to her weekly room Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's called Small Business Savvy, Insider Secrets You Need to Know. I checked it out for myself last week, and it was just the dose of inspiration and confidence my day needed. So get those good vibes going at kittymeowboutique.com and tell them Sarah sent you. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for coming to the paper fold. It is my hope that no one listening to this, no matter their political beliefs, no matter what they stock, ever goes through anything like what Suzanne did. But I think we can all learn something from Suzanne and Mockingbird Papery. As I was editing this, I found myself recalling one of my favorite books, To Kill a Mockingbird. My dog is named Scout for good reason, and I couldn't help recalling Atticus Finch's wise reminder that we just really need to walk a while in one another's shoes, regardless of color, religion, 
sexual orientation, socioeconomic level, what have you. It's all about awareness and compassion for others. So you can imagine, I so admire Suzanne for taking such a reasoned, thoughtful, compassionate approach and penning a response that she can be proud of for posterity. Here's the closing five paragraphs of her open letter that, again, you can see in its entirety on my site. The crux of the matter is that some who advocate for constitutional rights pause their advocacy when what's being written or said doesn't align with their political views. It is not now, nor has it ever been, un-American to carry a birthday card that maligns or disparages a sitting American president. Granted, it may be considered in poor taste or disrespectful, but it is certainly not prohibited, criminal, or punishable by death as it is in other countries. We have a right to freely speak our mind, and that has always been an important hallmark of this country. As this country continues to roil over current political schisms with an almost blind rage at our extremes, it seems that division has become our way of life. Many of us are retreating within our selected groups and avidly rejecting the quote unquote others who don't share our political ideology. If we continue on this irresponsible and reckless path, our American melting pot will boil over as we grow farther and farther apart from each other. Obviously, we can't all hold hands and sing we are the world together, but if we don't begin to take a step toward each other or at least attempt to cultivate mutual understanding and respect for one another, it is more likely that we will continue to confront each other with angst and frustration and, in extreme cases, extreme violence. As a step toward conciliation, with respect for traditional humanist values, we thank all of those who have expressed to us their opinions and we continue to express our own. We thank those who have been considerate enough to explain their opposition in a logical and polite manner. And we wholeheartedly thank those who have made the effort to voice their support for our business. You have shown us that in Ithaca, we live in a community of caring, participation, and openness. Love, Mockingbird Papery. Wow. So if you can't write something like that and you find yourself in a similar struggle, take a deep breath and remember Suzanne's well-reasoned approach. My guess is that she could open a PR crisis management firm when all is said and done here. Finally, thank you all so much for listening. As always, email me at sarah at thepapernerd.com with any feedback, questions, if you're wanting to appear on an episode, or if you just have an idea for an episode. And if you are liking what you are hearing, please subscribe and leave me a good rating and review. I can't tell you how much that helps. Thank you so much, paper peeps. Please stay well. Mm-hmm.